I've been a soldier since I was 19, and I still haven't learned how to wait for it. I wanted a mission for my sins. They gave me one. Nobody'd ever gone on a mission like it before. And when it was over, I never want another one. Your mission is to proceed up the Nung River in a Navy patrol boat. Pick up Colonel Kurtz's path at New Mung Ba. When you find the colonel, infiltrate his team by whatever means available and terminate the colonel's command. Terminate. Terminate is extreme prejudice. My orders say I'm not supposed to know where I'm taking this boat, so I don't. But one look at you and I know it's going to be hot. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. It smells like victory. I'm short and we got to go up there so you can kill one of our own guys. Who's the commanding officer here? I hear you. And you? He was close. He was real close. I couldn't see him, but I could feel him. These are all his children, man, as far as you can see. They think you've come to, uh, to take him away. And I hope that is true. Could we uh, talk to Colonel Kurtz? You don't talk to the Colonel. Uh, well, will you listen to him? Are you an assassin? I'm a soldier. You're an errand boy, sent by grocery clerks. Let go. A V N. It's headphones, Steel. What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you my next review as far as watching classic films goes. And in this case it's going to be the update to Apocalypse Now called Apocalypse Now Redux, which is currently streaming on Amazon or sorry on uh, Netflix. Um in the Redux form, which adds about 45 minutes or so of additional footage, um, fixes a color and general visual of the film and audio and that sort of stuff. So reading online, I read that the Redux version kind of messes with the pacing of the original version of the film. So whereas the original is more intense and gritty, the, sec the Redux version is uh, a little bit more slower paced, but for me, going into the film fresh and not having seen the entire film, the Redux version of the film actually felt pretty evenly faced, or evenly paced, and it generally showed a good um, descent into um, the various characters, how the effects of war. Um, messes with different people's head, the um, drug use and all of that, and the mind of Martin Sheen's character as he was progressively getting closer and closer to Marlon Brando's character, the Colonel or Colonel Kurtz that he was going after as far as his mission goes. So that and then also the film I think also started on a good note to show his state of mind in the beginning of um, kind of the duality of being a soldier of war as far as the mental effects and the toll it takes on the human mind, um, the horrors of war, which they very well portrayed as far as going back into it. Like they, when you're in war, you want to be at home, but then when you're at home, it's hard to live without war. Um, like the ceiling fan in the beginning reminded Martin Sheen's character of the helicopter blades, um, and then the slow descent that of the silence that accompanies the soldiers when they're going into battle, and, which I also think they portrayed very, uh, very well. So, in gen and so rather than having an overbearing audio track, as far as you know, having a, a very loud and noisy score, it was actually a very quiet film, and even having the theme of or the musical theme for Apocalypse Now throughout the film was very subtle to the point where when you even when you don't have that score, you notice how quiet it is. And then when you have the score of the, I think it's a Flight of the Valkyrie or the Rise of the Valkyrie, whatever music that they're playing when the helicopters are um, flying over that town um, with all the various um, helicopters, 
was extra loud and noticeable because it's and it serves its purpose that much more for the effect that they're trying to go with. So in watching the film this time and not having seen the original version, I thought e- so. For me, recommending either film is very easy, just to show. The, um, with the Redux version, it's a little bit more slower paced, but you generally get a more evenly paced descent into the Hoarders of War, whereas the original version I can now imagine as being just the, the loudness, the noisiness, the intensity and all of that, uh, that the original would probably have just have that more intensity basically to present that um, Hoarders of War. Um, and so the final bit I want to say is that the um, having the introduction of Marlon Brando's character approximately two and a half hours into the film also served as an interesting and well-placed introduction because you now really want to know over the course of the first two and a half hours of the film what he did and what kind of character he is now to deserve um, the... Uh, request of the of command to ha- be terminated with extreme prejudice, and you see that relationship build even in the though it's the last you know forty five minutes of the film between Martin Sheen and Marlon Brando that he, that um, Martin Sheen's character is just an errand boy, and war is horrible, war is horrific, and there's a lot of horrors, but nobody wants to address that so. It's not necessarily a film about being anti-war, but it's more of a film that feels like about being pro-supporting troops as far as war being horrible, but no one deals with what happens after the war is done and acknowledging the difficulties that soldiers face when they come back. So with Brando's character, he stayed there and didn't and he basically feels like he's outside of the system now that he's finished all their training he's staying there and he's you know ruling all these people in a godlike manner but it's because he feels like he's figured out what this what life is like as far as the horrors of war and the peacefulness of life and living in that balance in between what she tries to present with Martin Sheen who I feel also started to understand his point of view but he still has a job to do and he's just a soldier performing or fulfilling the mission that was given to him um so that's all there is really for this particular review um so on that note i actually wanted to pivot a little bit and when i was watching this film it actually reminded me of something along the way as i was progressing and in the second half of the film it actually reminded me of one of my favorite shows in an episode they did that kind of presents a similar aspect on a little bit more of a lighthearted side of it with a little bit more um easier resolution to it in the form of the stargate sg1 episode the first commandment so it's a season one episode notably season one episode five where sg1 um goes to a planet to figure out why one of the other sg teams did not return and why they had sent the signal through so it kind of raises all sorts of questions and this is still early on in the uh, show so they also want to figure out why soldiers are not returning on schedule and that sort of thing um and so when they go to investigate the planet and i'm glad they didn't spend too much time on this but the guy that's on the planet the leader of sg9 was actually in a relationship previously with captain carter and they broke it off because she realized that he's not entirely stable but this episode presents a similar theme as apocalypse now in that the um the leader of sg9 when he goes to this planet comes across a planet of um what he figures are primitives or primitives compared to what to his perception of um his advanced state and realizes that he can rule over them as a godlike person and because he came through the stargate the um members of the society also think that he's a godlike figure and he ends up not denying it the rest of the team um, ultimately realizes this and two of them want to get back through the Stargate to let Command know what happens or what happened and help 
either bring him back or figure out what's going on and how to deal with him. So overall, the episode deals with a similar theme of a military man thinking he's a godlike figure to a society or a race of people who he thinks he are primitive and attempts to establish a society over them. Um, SG-1 takes a slightly different route in that, that, the, in that the leader of SG-9 um, takes a more assertive role in trying to determine the fate of their society and uh, reshape them to his image, whereas Apocalypse Now is more of dealing with the effects of war and following other people's orders and trying to live a life in a society um, that doesn't necessarily think of him as a god to, that's going to rule over them, but kind of a god from an, a society that they think is more advanced. And it's along the lines of um, the only reason um, so, or a, a sufficiently advanced society can be th thought of as godlike because, they, or I know, of course I'm saying this wrong, is something where along the lines of um, a sufficiently advanced society is, can be thought of as god because they're su um, sufficiently advanced from the society that they're going to interact with. So um, SG-1 takes a route of the leader of SG-9 um, trying to establish his will over this primitive race of societies no matter what the cost and kind of rebuilding it in his image even though he's not a godlike or even though he has a godlike complex and he's not a god and SG SG-1 ends up having to um, prove to the people that they're not gods and that they're not going to exert their dominance over them because they're not gods and they don't want to be perceived like the ghouled um, who are there before them. So if you want, and then the other thing that I actually feel that, I, and while I didn't particularly like the leader of SG of SG Nine acting because it was a kind of a switch between calm and rational and then angry acting, I thought it was good enough to get across a point that he's not a perfect person, and even though he was trying to get across his way, we knew that he wasn't going to be able to succeed just because of the duality and in his mind as far as what he was doing and how easy it was to get under his skin. Whereas Marlon Brando in Apocalypse Now felt a lot more convincing just because he was calm and rational and pragmatic and presenting his point of view as matter-of-factly and plainly as possible. So um, if, you know, Marlon Brando's style of acting had been present in SG-1, it would have, in this episode of Stargate SG-1, that SG-9 leader's acting and per portrayal of his godlike um, thought process would have made it for that much more of a compelling episode. And if he had flipped out right at the end when Daniel Jackson and Teal reveal that he's not a god, that would have made, in my opinion, that much more dramatic of an episode. But the episode presents his character in a good enough way to say show his general progression downhill that he's not in a proper state of mind and that Captain Carter's assessment of him that he's that he doesn't take that kind of rejection well was um generally portrayed very well in this episode so if you kind of want a shorter version and a little bit more or a lot more lighter version of Apocalypse Now then Stargate SG-1 Season one, episode five, is an interesting way to go because they play on this on similar themes of uh, advanced society or a member of an advanced society losing their mind a little bit and developing a godlike complex, but ultimately failing just because it's something that is generally frowned upon, even though it's done for the right reasons. In the case of Apocalypse Now, but. Um, a wrong thought process done for wrong reasons and in the wrong way as portrayed in the first commandment. So, and then also the one thing I also liked that they did well at the end of SG-1 was the discussion between Colonel O'Neill and Captain Carter discussing the commandments and that once you shoot a person, and that shooting a person is no um, easy feat and it's no measure, it should not be any measure of uh, progress and pride or like a notch on your belt that, uh, as an accomplishment 
and that once you start going down that route, it's going to continue down that route into being a person that you can no longer uh, acknowledge or remember being just because you are doing something that's against nature and against something that people should be doing to begin with. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, um, subscription links supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode, being a supporter of the show, and until next time.